All right, in this tutorial, I just want to show you a couple of quick, very basic watercolor techniques that you can practice and use in your artwork. So a couple things that you're going to need is, obviously, you'll need some watercolors. You can also have some oil pastels, or if you don't have oil pastels and you just want to use a box of crayons, that is fine. If you don't have crayons or you don't have oil pastels, then a pencil will work for part of this. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I have a piece of paper. I just want to divide this up into four different sections since I am going to show you how to do four different techniques. So uh, draw a line in the middle of my paper and then divide up other ways. So you can kind of see that's what my sheet looks like. I've got a six by nine little notebook here of 80 pound paper, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Okay, so I've got four sections. My first section, I want to label each of these uh, so I can reference them later if I need to and I can remember the technique later. So I'm going to label this one as a wash. I'll label the next one as uh, resist the third one as texture and the last one is dry it doesn't really matter which order these are in but that's the way that I'm going to paint them so there you have it all right so for my wash the very first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that my paper is wet. So when you do a wash, your paper is wet and your pigment and your paint is wet as well. So I'm gonna take a brush and some water, which hopefully you have on hand. I don't think I said that in the beginning, but if you have watercolors, you'll need a brush and some water. All right, so uh, what I've done is I've just taken some clean water and I've added it to my paper, okay? Just to kind of saturate that paper there. And as a matter of fact, I am going to flip my notebook over so that I'm only working on this one sheet just in case I get a little crazy with the water and uh, I don't want it to bleed through to my other pages. Okay, so the cool thing about a wash is once you get your paper saturated here is that you can use this to sort of create really cool uh, sort of a tie-dye effect. Okay, you can blend and mix colors with this. Now be careful which colors you choose to do this with. You don't want to end up with a dog barf brown unless that's what you're looking for. Then mix away. All right, so I can take this and with my brush, I can swirl it around, or if I just let it dry like this, um, it'll end up with this cool kind of tie-dye color. This is really nice for backgrounds, uh, if you have large areas that you need to cover, this is kind of a cool way to add a little bit of a variety of color into your background in a quick, easy, simple way. So there's the wash. Uh, the resist, again, you can do this with crayon or oil pastel. If you don't have those handy, you are going to want to skip this part of the video because you can't really do this without crayons or oil pastels. Unless somebody else has a magical way to do this, um, let me know. All right, so uh, resist. I'm just going to put, uh, with my oil pastels, I'm just going to spell the word art. Keeping it simple here. You can do your name. You can do whatever you'd like. Okay, so I want to press kind of hard with my oil, oil pastel. I also want to show you what it looks like with a crayon. So here's the crayon. Okay, I'm pressing hard on that. And then uh, with my oil pastel again, here's a little yellow. Okay, I'm also gonna use a white. Now you might not be able to see this, but eventually you will. Okay, so I've got my drawing all taken care of. I kept it simple for this exercise. You can go ahead and get as detailed as you like on yours. And then what I'm gonna do is, um, add some color to my painting. And what'll happen is the wax or the oil from 
the oil pastels or the crayon, it will resist the watercolor. So you can see I can just simply paint right over this and my drawing still shows right through. So there's your resist. Kind of neat. If you've got uh, some beading going on here, you can certainly take a paper towel or a tissue if you have that on hand, and you can kind of blot that up if you'd like. Not necessary ne if you don't want to, but you certainly can if you'd like to. Okay? So that's wash, that's resist. We're going to move on to texture and dry. So with these, it helps if you have a smaller brush. Whereas if I'm doing a wash or a resist, it's definitely nice if I have a larger brush. Uh, if you don't have a larger brush, well, c'est la vie. You can just do uh, the same with a smaller brush. It just might take you a little longer. Okay, so for my texture, um, my texture and my dry are both very similar techniques. That basically means that my paint is wet, but my paper is dry. And even though my brush is a little bit wet, it's not dripping. So you may need that paper towel on hand just kind of pick up some of that excess water. Now I'm going to use black for this just so that you can see. But as I'm working with my watercolor, I want to make sure that I've, wo I've you know, basically woken up my watercolor with a little bit of water, okay? But I don't want this to be dripping. I want to have total control over where my pigment goes. Okay, so for my texture, I'm just going to take my brush, I'm actually going to use the side of my brush versus the tip of my brush. So I'm just going to press down. I'm going to create this really thick line. Okay. So I'm going to try and mimic just some little bamboo here. So now I'm using the tip of my brush to do that. So basically what you're doing is you're practicing using both sides or the side of your brush and the tip of your brush. Now, if you start to get some feathering, okay, like you start to run out of ink, that's not the end of the world. That just means you might need a little bit more water. But again, it's got to be a happy medium. You don't want too much. Okay, so here's my little line here. Okay. So you're using your brush almost kind of like a stamp versus a traditional brush style. Let's say that's a little flower. You can use the tip of the brush again to create a stem. Let's do some leaves. Okay, so play around with that. You can add as many leaves, add as many leaves or uh, flowers or stampy shapes as you'd like. Totally up to you. Okay, for the last one, we've got dry, and it's the same kind of technique. So again, uh, I need water in my paints, but I don't want them to be super wet. Okay, so now for this texture, the texture is very, very, I'm sorry, not the texture, for the dry, um, I'm going to use just the very tip of my brush, and I'm going to practice almost in a calligraphy-like style. So I'm going to create some cross hatching here. Okay, so again, what you're showing and what you're practicing is that you can control your pigment and your brush strokes. Very, some nice thin lines. Maybe try a spiral. Okay. Maybe try writing your initials. But again, just a, a, some easy practice things that you can do to work on your watercolor skills.